perfect. We're talking about sort of uh, what maybe a uh, blue belt should be focusing on as far as moves and attacks and whatnot. And you had said the setups. For s here at the gym, with you specifically, what are you looking for in your white belts to know, hey, uh, they're around the corner, they might be ready to get that blue belt. Like, what are you looking for in those white belts? Like, what, what do they look like? What are their techniques? How do they feel? Is it setups? Is it like what are you looking for yeah. specifically? Ma mainly, when what we're looking for is like in that transition, you shouldn't be so rigid. Like you shouldn't be hitting people in the fo face with forearms trying to pass. Mm. You shouldn't be like the like a like everybody knows who's even a a one year blue belt a uh, white belt knows what a beginner white belt feels, feels like. like. It's yeah. like really like stiff. It's really rigid. Um, when you're doing your transitions with a a good white belt that's ready to transition to blue, it shouldn't feel like that. It should be a little bit more smooth and methodical. Granted, you may be sweeping them and submitting them, but the flow and the transitions of everything is gonna feel different. What do you think that is in the white belt? That... It's the confidence in it. Mm. It's the confidence in their ability to hit the moves on people. Because if they don't hit, let's just say a scissor sweep this way, they know they have options to block the arm and go triangle. Or whatever oh, the case may so, be. So, so options, you think that that's a mindset, like I have to hit this and that's why I'm so rigid? S somewhat, somewhat like sometimes they do, they think like, oh, this is how we practice the move. I should work this yes. way. Yes, it should, but sometimes instead of a scissor sweep, you might have to push the front of the knee, the quad versus, or the inside of the knee to push them out. To open it, yeah. Yeah, so the, the you know, different adjustments you have to make. Mm. So it should be like more of like action reaction like Cobrinha says. As you're ready to get blue, the rigidity of your like tension trying to do a move should be gone. Yeah. It should be a little bit more fluid. Like almost like you can see the next step ahead. If this doesn't work, I then I have this. Else. If not, I can go back to close guard and just reset. Mm. They should be confident in like that they, in the series in the series of everything they yeah. shouldn't not necessarily means that they're gonna um sweep everybody every mm -hmm. time but they should feel like okay well i didn't get it on you know purple belt uh joe then i'm gonna get it on you know i can do it on white belt steve but not uh brown belt kirk yeah whatever the case may be yeah, yeah. you know but still it should still feel like hey he's he really understands like yeah. what he's doing because i can feel him looking for this option, but tried to go to this one. Mm. It didn't work. He reset, pulled me back in. Yeah. You know, so you you, you can kind of feel. It's so that smooth feeling, that rigidity, that rigidity sort of goes away with an understanding of the series. Yes. And the experience. And then you're like, okay, this and guy the, yeah. is coming up on his blue. He's, it, yeah, it's actually the understanding and then the application yeah. of it. The actual that's, applying that's it. That's interesting. It's almost like, a, it, as you're saying that, like the stiffness and rigidity, it's like like a banana or a nectarine. If it's too stiff, it's not ripe. Right. It's not ready to be consumed. But a nectarine, when it starts to, it's like, oh, this is... It loosens up a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. And it's there's, ripe. It's ready. But then there's other cases, too, where you, like, there's blue belts or white belts that have been white belt for two years, and it's like there's no need to keep them there because they're on the border but they're still a little rigid, mm. sometimes you have to throw them in the deep end. Like, to hey, push them to, to that push them. Are you gonna mm. stay like this? Or are you gonna just be that mediocre blue belt? And most people, when they get another belt, another switch, they're like, no, I'm not gonna be that that Joe Schmo blue belt that just gets smacked by everybody. You, so you, so. It's, it's not, different for yeah, everybody. Yeah. So obviously it's a person by person thing, mm -hmm. but you're saying it's almost, uh, have you ever heard the example of the, like the eagles and the eagle's nest? Right. Uh, yeah, they, they take out the the nest, so yeah, they the pokes them in the butt yeah, or throws the them out. The mom will break up the nest, so it makes it uncomfortable. And if they still stay, she pushes, pushes them, them out, out of the nest, right. so they have to learn to fly. Right. As opposed to becoming complacent with being a white belt, you're sort of throwing them out of right. the nest and say, hey, fly at blue. Right. To, like, mm, push yourself mentally. Push yeah. yourself, like, technically. Because some people are okay with being a three-year white belt because they'll smack everybody. Yeah. You know? 
but then once it gets to blue belt, it's like it's like a weight on their shoulders that they they don't want to like. Okay, at blue belt, I have to be able to compete with the other blue belts in class. Yeah. Not even at a tournament, but technically, I should be on their level. I used to say that all the time when I was a blue belt. I'm like, well, sorry, coach, I'm a, I'm just a white belt. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of people think too. Uh, it, it's like uh, you'll hear a lot of stories of people being like, "Oh, coach, I'm not ready for the next belt," but like, I think you are. Yeah. It's like. It's their confidence in what they're doing, but sometimes you gotta, yeah, you know, give, push them into them it, like, nudge, and they grow into the belt. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. But mentally, they grow into the belt. Yeah. Technically, they're ready, but they just don't believe in it. Do you in think it's like there's something that happens when you put that belt around their waist, like you said, the sort of the mindset shift, like, because I mean, technically, nothing has changed. Yeah. With them. But now it's the mental heaviness of carrying that blue belt and that thing being around your waist. Right. Because what is it about that? It's everybody's ego. Everybody has a bad ego and a good ego. Yeah. The good ego is like, no, I'm not going to just be mediocre. No. I don't want to be that blue belt that just sucks at everybody who comes or everybody who I train with is just like smacking me up. Yeah. You know, my, all my peers in my rank. Uh -huh. Right. So I think it's a mental thing. Like, no, I, I can... You know, yeah. they just realize that it's just a belt, yeah. but I'm just as good as everybody else. Yeah. I can do better. So it's like a mental thing for everybody. Like, I, I know I was like that. It's like every time I went up, I'm like, no, I'm not going to. Even now, I talked to you the other day. I'm yeah. like, no, bro. Like, I, I feel like I need yeah. to keep going. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what it really like, is. Like you want to live up to what you were given. Right, yeah. exactly. And it's and it's mainly a, a, a mental personal thing that it's yeah, within me. I've never me. considered it that way. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. awesome. Anything else about? No. That's it. That's All right. right. Thank you for your insight. Appreciate All it. Right. Thanks, Coach.